if if there's anything that you say from this point on, this is where we judge you. So here's what I gotta say. This is the one. This is I I lied to her listeners. I told her this was gonna be nice and easy. Now I'm gonna hit her with the hard stuff. Paris, okay. if you had an opportunity to get five hundred million dollars, or you could help twenty families here in Austin, what you gonna take? Um, I'm gonna take the five hundred million dollars. I'm gonna use it towards my tuition, and then with the rest of the money, I'll give it to the families. <laughs> okay. See, I thought I was gonna mess you up there, and you fell for it. But it, no, but I mean, that's it's okay. It's okay to want for yourself. What you do with the money, nobody knows what you're gonna do with that money. You can help more than twenty families. Yeah. But sometimes we want to fake. I was just trying to see if you was going. Going fake and be like, oh, I want to help the families. <laughs> Come on, man. You know you want that money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you why even, people you... do that. It's because it's like in college, I've also learned like it's you for yourself. Like you have to do for yourself. Whenever you're on a plane, Paris, what's the first thing they tell you? In the event of an emergency, there's going to be oxygen mass that's going to fall from the ceiling. Put it on yourself first before you try to help others. Don't nobody complain about that. We know that to be pretty smart. Take care of yourself first so you can help someone else. Yeah. I don't get it. But I like you didn't even hesitate. The The best part about that is we know what kind of a person you are. So you're not, you you don't, you don't mess around. You don't tiptoe around it. You don't walk on eggshells. You seem pretty authentic. Let me tell you, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do unapologetically. Would that be a good yeah. review? Yeah, a lot of people tell me that. They tell me even like I could be lost and they'll be like, you just look like you know where you're going. I'm like, I don't know how, but I'm lost right now. <laughs> um, what is your dream car? That's really crazy because like my boyfriend, he asked me that yesterday. But uh -huh. <laughs> my dream car is I like Jeeps. And I have a Jeep now, but I want yeah. a Jeep Wrangler. I want it to be all black, and I want it to have red interior. Oh, man, I like that. Yeah, you got that strawberry interior. Ugh. Okay, yeah. I like it. You know, I'm surprised, especially because I was telling you I was in the military. Man, we all buy Jeeps. I'm surprised I never bought one. Is there anything better than a trip getting ready? Nope. For a long journey where my podcast released a new app and searching for a fade fiend. New, new fixation. fixation. Giving this a subscribe is the same sensation. Started with the day ones. They gave us fuel to support the season. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here for a reason. Notification bells. Have some friends. All to let you know. Check your Bluetooth. Connect. Talk your wisdom. I know. Welcome in, everyone. Episode 144. Weekend with Paris, with our guest, Paris Blade. Paris, hold on, we we about to we about to start this off on a bad foot. Why are you giving me the fake name, Paris Blade? Girl, what are you you trying to be an action hero? That ain't your real name, is it? No, that's my real name. Your last name really is Blade, like a yeah. knife. Blade. That is the most awesome thing ever, Paris. Come on now, tell me, tell me that there's a comic book, there's a superhero. What what do you do with a last name like that? I'm impressed. I don't know. It's actually crazy because I remember going to the hospital and this lady was like, "You have a very Caucasian name," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, that's." And I have to correct people too. I'm like, not Blake is Blade. What about? I bet I bet they they call you Blades. Too yeah. alive, don't they? Mm -hmm. Why don't we do that? We've been messing that. It's already, it's already nice the way it is. Okay, so what? Where did the parents get the Paris from? I gotta know where the Paris come from. Um, it was from my dad. Yeah, he just wanted us to be all city names. So my oh. sister, her name is Phoenix. Yeah, and he did another P. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 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 Pop. Yo, where is your dad from? I don't want to know He's about from Germany. Dude. Like he was born in Germany. Yo, I was born in Germany. For real? Yeah, I was born in Nuremberg. Where, where, do you remember where he was born? He was born in Lands Landstuhl. Landstuhl. Army base. Yeah. Landstuhl. I know it well. Yeah. All right. 
Man, we're well, gonna holler at your pops, man. We gonna we gonna speak his Deutsch. D- does he speak German? Did he, no, did he no. remember? That's he was, all right. He was everywhere, like as a kid. That's all right. I'll take him back to the motherland. <laughs> Yo, Wait, you can speak German. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's how you say it. yes. Yeah, uh, he speak a Deutsch. Um, it's it's a. I really like it. It's not my number one language. Russian is my number one, but. Mm-hmm. That's because right now I'm really focusing on Russian. The majority of my life, I spent a lot of, I spoke a lot of German, but lately I've been working on Russian. I've been trying to dive into Russian so much. I don't do as much German as I used to. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lived there as a kid. And then I did live there as an adult for three years. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he has not been back since. That's crazy though. Oh, he got to go back. And you should go back too with him. Yo, when I lived in Germany, I could drive to Paris faster than I could drive to New Orleans right now. I mean, it, I mean, it was like it was like four hours. That ain't bad. At all. And, and you know what? I think he would have been closer if he goes back to see Lunch Tool. I, I want to say he's about two hours, maybe two, maybe three hours away. I, I just have to check that. But uh, okay, man, that's that's cool. Hey, enough about your dad. Your dad's stealing your shine like that. <laughs> 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 Yo, Phoenix though. Um, what what does she think about Paris? Like, is she want Paris and you want Phoenix? Y'all both happy with it? What's her feeling about it? When she was younger, she didn't like pe- the name because she felt like it was a boy name. It wasn't like feminine. Oh. But now she loves her name. Actually, that's. I don't know. I love I, it. I, I always liked my name. I like them both. I've never met. A, a person named Phoenix, so I like it. I, I like what I like. I'm a comic book fan, so of course, mm-hmm. if you're a comic f- book fan, Phoenix is is huge to you. So I, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of geeky nerds that come up to her all the time, like yo. No, but there's no? actually somebody else on the soccer team named Phoenix too. On That's your soccer team, ever met. yeah. What are the chances of that? I ain't met one, and you know at least two. I don't get that. I mean, you live. In, oh, they follow you. The phoenixes rise from the ashes and follow Paris Blade. All right, okay. So let, let's go back to something else then. What's the number one city you want to go visit? And I'm assuming you haven't made it to Paris yet. But what's the number one city you want to visit? Surprisingly, it's not Paris because. I don't know. I just don't want to, I really, that's never been a hype for me, oh. but I don't really have a city. It's more like a state that I love. I don't have like a city like I need to visit because I've kind of been like traveled a lot. Yeah. But like I love the state of Florida. I just love Florida. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I like Colorado too. That's number two. Yo, those are good ones. Those are really good ones. Um, You've been to the top of a mountain in Colorado yet? Yeah. Okay. You did any skiing or snowboarding in Colorado? No, but we did like uh we picked berries and stuff. Like we would see people on the side of the road selling yeah. like fruit and stuff, like nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved I loved Colorado. Uh I I go to Colorado a lot, matter of fact. Now I think about it. Now, especially now that I live here in Texas. I'm not from Texas, but Yo, I go to Colorado a lot. I used to live in Florida, though. Um, all right. In Florida, this is where we're going to learn something about you. What's your favorite city in Florida? You got to choose. I know you said you like, you, you're you giving me states, but I got to find out what your number one city is in Florida. Uh, I know. I'm going to say, I can tell you the one I don't like the most. Like, it's not for somewhere I would want to, like, live, and that's Miami because it's expensive. I liked it for spring break and stuff, but like, other than that, no, I would not live there. Paris, all my Miami fans, you know, they they mad now, and I think I only got two Miami fans as of today. But yo, you live in the tenth largest city in America. Austin has more one million dollar homes than any other city. Yeah, it's but I'm from Dallas. Here. I'm from what Dallas. Is, I like Dallas now? better. So then you, okay, then you, I can't, I couldn't shake you though. I thought I could shake you. I was trying to take up for Miami, but nah, 
you know, you and I have it. You, you. Yeah, Dallas, a lot of our homes, like my dad, he lives on like a good amount of acres of land and his home is eighty eight hundred thousand dollars but here yeah. that would probably be like two million. Oh, no doubt no yeah. doubt yeah yeah wait whoa 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 see now you know why your dad gotta be so interesting parents now we gotta talk about your papa right quick what he got out there what he doing with that land he he a rancher he, he he's um, driving atvs like every day what he doing with that land so my dad he's actually a retired nfl player he played for the cowboys yeah. What's his name? His name is Willie Blade. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I have heard of him. I have. I have. All right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Now, now I'm all mad. <laughs> you you told us something, and then Dad came in, and he was kind of interesting. You told us something, Dad came back in. That is like really interesting. But you know what? We ain't talking about your papa. No more of this podcast. Shoot, I mean, man. he is one of the most interesting people in my life. He is. I'm not going to lie. Don't do that, Paris. Don't do that. You're going to bring us back to him. <laughs> We're trying to get you. Yo, I, I'm, I'm curious, though. Did he put a football in your hand? Even, I mean, you know, like flag football. He might have said, we're going to do some powder puff or we're going to do some flag if it wasn't going to be tackle. Did he, did he try to push you towards yeah. it? He actually loves me being in soccer. Like he wanted me to be a goalie. I did come into college as a goalie, but now I play more on the field, but he likes me as a goalie and he always kind of pushed me. Like when I play soccer, even as a goalie, like he, oh, be first, be first. Like that's how my dad is. So let me say, um, how tall is your dad? Uh, like about six, three, six, four. How tall are you? Uh, five eight, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's a that's a good that's not a bad size for a goalie. I mean, you yeah. would rather have a five eight lady than a, a five four or five three, yeah. So, how, how tall is y'all's goalie now? Um, she's almost about my height, she's probably like five seven, five six, yeah. She's about right about my height. Girl, you better stay away from that goal, don't be messing around <laughs> over there. You know, how everybody wants to play the position they not. <laughs> Don't be messing around over there showing coach you you know how to dive. You got some hand eye coordination. Oh <laughs> they, no, I was a goalie at the beginning of the season. I was. Oh, how'd you do? I did good, but it was like he already knew who he wanted. Like he already had because he brought back the old goalie too. So he oh. already knew who he wanted. And then he saw me on the field and he liked me better on the field. So he just put me in that. When I lived in Houston, I played a lot of pickup soccer i mean it's a great city for soccer like every did you part play with the africans i did yeah i did um a lot of mexicanos a lot of salvadoreños i mean <laughs> i if they if they got some o's in it i don't play <laughs> and i know we don't say africanos but <laughs> i got them all i play with them all but i'm gonna tell you this though once or twice, I'm I'm a fast runner, so you know I I got to be on that field normally. Mm -hmm. But this couple of times, I remember the first time some people told me to go play goalie, and I thought, yo, I'm a good athlete, so we we nice with this. This I'm about to shut it down. Nope, harder than I thought, because there's a little bit of traffic in front of you, and all of a sudden that ball comes squirting out or firing out, and you're like, oh, it's going over there, and I don't even know if you're gonna make it. And that day, Paris, your boy ain't making a lot. <laughs> Newfound respect yeah. for goalies. Also, people like as a goalie, you have to have confidence. You have to have like eye court. You have to have an eye on the ball at all times. Like being a goalie, it's not what everybody thinks. Like they just think, oh, you just sit there and block the ball. But nah, 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 nah. it was a lot. I had to give up my body sometimes. Like yo, you have to. You got man. There were. There's always a couple times you might get a little fingernail on it. If you dive, you just might get a. You just gotta divert it, and then yeah. you you gotta do a burpee. You gotta get up as quick as possible mm -hmm. and get back to it. So, no, you got me. Nah, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna say it. I was gonna. You got me ready to go out and play goalie right now. Nope, I learned my <laughs> lesson. I'm messing with that, no more. Not to mention, this couple times. I dived and I didn't get it. It ain't no worse feeling than giving it all up and then realizing 
Now nah, you missed that. <laughs> so yeah. that, that, that. When you brush yourself off, you got to get the ball out the net. That's the worst feeling. It is. I feel, I feel like, like I was a failure. Yeah, like I felt like I was letting everybody down. It's like, dang. I mean, they could have put anybody else back here. I guess they thought I was going to be able to do it, and I'm not. <laughs> That's, yo, know, I I wish you wouldn't have reminded me of that, Paris. Just for that, we're going to talk about your dad. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yo, what other sports did you play, though? Because if, if you were a soccer player at 5'8", that means your wind is good. So I know basketball wanted you. Um, I bet volleyball wanted to give you some love. You from Dallas, so it's a bunch of athletes, but you can't coach yeah. height. And then I'm also going to say, I'm going to say track. Probably wanted you to maybe do some shot put mm-hmm. or, or, oh, check me out. Check me out. Did I impress you just now? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what happened with when when you started rolling through high school what sports did you end up doing so it all started in like uh, middle school so seventh grade was the year we could all start playing and in seventh grade I was playing volleyball and then when volleyball season was over they put you in in Dallas schools they're like okay when this sport is over, everybody from this sport is going to this sport and everybody from this sport is going. So it was like nonstop. So I played all of the sports and then they tried to make me run long distance. And then I was like, no. And then they put me as a thrower. And I actually won like the district for in middle school. Oh, and then, yeah. But when I got to high school, I was like, I tried to do throwing and I was like, oh, this is not middle school anymore. Like. <laughs> they yeah. caught up with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, my legs, they were too weak. And then I was more focused on soccer because I was also in club. I was in club in elementary as well. So from elementary all the way up to high school. And so, and then freshman year came, I transferred schools because I went to DeSoto High School and I, oh. I always was in the DeSoto district. And that's yeah. like a big like sports like district. So, oh, I know about it. Yeah, so I had to transfer. We went. I transferred to Red Oak my freshman year, and I played volleyball. And volleyball, that's when like, it was really like, it was a wake up call because it was like, okay, there's more. Like they taught me more, and there was more of a there was more white people there than black people like at Desoto. Yeah, and the coaches they were really nice and supportive. They helped me. They were very patient with me. And then after that, I went to basketball, and I'm not going to lie. It was like the coaches in volleyball, I didn't want to make it a race thing, but they were white, and they were very patient with me. They were nice. And then I had a basketball coach, and she was so, like, she was so mean. Like, and it, it made me not love basketball anymore. Like, she, she just, she wasn't patient. She always had a problem about something. And I was only a freshman. And I just, I stopped playing basketball after that year. And then I moved on to soccer and I love soccer there. And I still play uh, club soccer as well. And then after that, I moved back to DeSoto. And oh. that's when I did shot put again. And it wasn't for me. It wasn't. <laughs> so then I still continued to play volleyball and soccer. And I stopped playing volleyball my junior year. And then yeah. I just continued with soccer. Oh, yeah. it's. If you had an opportunity to dive in volleyball, because when you were playing soccer at that time, were you a goalie when you were playing club and in school? Mm -hmm. So dive for the ball in volleyball, diving for the ball as a goalie. I mean, you like a judo master. Like, you know how to fall without hurting yourself. I was um, actually, because when I went to Red Oak, I was an outside hitter in the middle because I'm tall, so I had the height for that. But then my coach, she would see, like, oh, she gets to the ball. Like, she dives. So she put me as a Diaz and a libero. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that rare for someone that's five foot eight? Yeah, it is. But yeah. maybe in college, it's not really because in college, when you get older, like, height is a big thing. Yeah. Oh, so – we had a um, we had a few people I know that, that that I know that have coached and have gone on to play volleyball in the college level, 
at, was there any point where you kind of thought about that? Or yeah, there oh, was. So you were interested, huh? Yeah, I was. But it was like I was so deep into soccer. I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna just yeah. stick with this. Yeah. No, I get that. You know, sometimes I know some people at some point have to make that decision on a sport. You you have to make the decision to specialize. That's a hard decision. I. I, I got a little lucky in high school. They let us play a couple sports at the same time. Our coaches got along. A lot of people don't get that. Here in Texas, sometimes you don't get that, especially with football being king. Yeah, yeah that's tough. All right. I remember actually, like, not to cut you off, yeah. I remember it was so hard, like, for me to watch volleyball games because I was yeah. like, dang, like, uh, I could play. Like, uh -huh. it just – it was so hard. It was hard for me to just even – play around with people in volleyball because it was like I would just remember my routine of getting up and going to volleyball practice yeah I'm gonna stay on high school just for a little bit longer it's senior year you just got your lunch tray from the lunch line if you brown bagged it don't worry about it stay with me here now that you got your tray of food senior year what table was you sitting at oh senior year I used to leave. I'm not going to lie. I used to skip lunch. Like, I used to walk around or I'll go sit in my car or something. Yeah. No, I get that. It's um, it's better that way. I I will admit you got your music. You can bump your music loud and listen to whatever you want. You can have some screen time on your phone and you ain't got to worry about anybody bugging you because you can't sit in a cafeteria on your phone. Somebody going to come up and talk to you. They see that you focused. They always want to talk there. What's that about? I don't know, man. <laughs> so, okay. So then are we saying you're a little bit of an introvert and to yourself kind of person? Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to say I'm a extroverted introvert because when I'm around people, like, yeah, like I'm loud, I'm laughing. But if I don't really know you, I, it takes me a minute sometimes to warm up to you. And yeah. if I catch like, oh, catch the vibe, like, oh, she's not really with my vibe. I'm like, okay, I kind of don't talk. And that was a big thing for me this year because a lot of people, like the soccer team, they thought, oh, she's kind of like standoffish. Like she doesn't really talk. Like, But that wasn't the thing. It was just like I have to warm up. And they weren't really on my – they weren't on my agenda, like my vibe. So I was like, okay, is this is just not my – People like I, I still love y'all, support y'all, everything soccer. Like it was just like socially wise, there it's just not for me. Yeah. Oh no, that was a really I understand big thing. that. No, it's that's 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 a real statement slash evaluation. You could force it. Just because we are teammates doesn't mean we gotta be sweet mates and best friends on campus. We come from all over the all over the world in some cases, especially when, since you play soccer. Yeah. Well, we we would never hang out in any other. Why would we force it? Yeah. <laughs> what matters is how we play together as a team. Don't nobody ask you, yo, are you in center field? That center fielder y'all hanging out today? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to know that. We could care less. What we want to know is, yo, you had a pass and you overshot that person. What you gonna do about that? <laughs> I mean, that's that's what we want to know. Yeah. So, what's the best part? of your game and what position do you play on the Houston Tillotson soccer team for those who don't know so what what do you, what is the best part of your game and, and what position do you play um I play center back at the begin well at the end of last season he was putting me as forward and stuff in midfield but as an official position is center back and my favorite part is like I like to be physical and yeah, I just like to be physical. I love being physical. Like, wait, that's wait. Me. just because your dad played in the NFL don't mean you got to play in the NFL. <laughs> Man, tackling and bumping and uh, you 5'8", too, so you bringing something with it. You used to do a little shot put. You could yeah. grab somebody's head and <laughs> get off me, girl. Now, that's cool. I, I always wonder if people just know how tough – soccer is i think the only thing we give soccer players here in america respect for is being good runners but yeah. you gotta 
that upper body game needs to be nice so you can keep your little distance, keep keep a little positioning against someone. You got to lean. You got to be able to box out. I think that matters. What's that header game looking like? You being five eight, you ever get any chances to jump up, be a, be a tree amongst them all, knock some headers? Yeah, I'm actually I actually had the ball a lot, like a lot. Even last year during during high school season, I yeah. did a lot of headers, a lot, like so, to the point where I was getting headaches. Is dag? Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Do you think it's? Not necessarily just the height, but do you think it's from your background of basketball and volleyball, and you know the air up there, you know about trying to, to get the ball at its highest point in volleyball, in basketball. If you want that rebound, you don't let it come to you. You got to go get it. Do you think that's what you're bringing to soccer? See, I never thought about that, actually, but it could play a part, but I never thought about that. Yep. Ball awareness. I'm a youth sports coach. And uh, <laughs> I know those are those are two of the big things. I, I coach volleyball. I coach basketball. Uh, I coach just about everything. But yeah, you got to man, you got to attack that ball. You got to go get it. So in basketball, what position were you playing then? I was a four, a forward, a power yeah. forward. Okay. A post, a post. Yeah, that's what it's called, a post. Yeah, like, because there's so many different names for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. You were, I'm going to say you were second tallest on your team, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Come on. Come on. Do I know my sports? Do I know my sports here? I'm just, I'm just nailing this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you grew up in Dallas. For people who don't know anything about Dallas, tell us a little bit about it. What do you think of Dallas since you spent so much time there? So this is, is this a place you're going to Go back and retire at and live there for the rest of your life. Like, help us learn about Dallas. Okay. No shade to Dallas, but um, I love Dallas. Uh -huh. And it makes me, like, living here makes me appreciate it because, like, our school, for example, it's a HBCU, but my high school was more of a HBCU because there were so many, like, black people. Like, here, there's more internationals and stuff. And I appreciate that because it's like I'm getting exposed to that and I love that. But I would definitely not retire in Dallas because it was like I was there my whole life. Yeah. I'll go visit. But no, I feel like in Dallas you have to have tough skin. And a lot of people who live there stay there. And I don't want to be a part of that. But in Dallas you really do have to have tough skin, especially coming into like our programs, like sports programs. You have to be ready. Like you have to be – you have to be aggressive. You have to, you have to want it. You have to, it's really a lot. It's the top competition to me, honestly. Y'all got athletes on top of athletes on top of athletes out there. I mean, I, yeah. I've taken, I've taken some athletes up from this, our Austin area up there to Dallas. I, I've had some success, but yo, you, I, I tell them we got to bring our A game. This is not, this isn't three A, four A down here. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the people it's, from my high school came out of like high school with a scholarship, even if it was from a JUCO. They yep. came out with a athletic scholarship. Yeah. yeah, I don't even doubt that. So then let's talk a little about that. How did we get you in Austin? Of all the places in all the world, how did we get you? And did you ever consider leaving Texas? Yes, I actually did. So it's like a, it's kind of like a coincidence. So last year, my school was like, I was actually planning on going into the Air Force, but my oh. school was like, hey, we're going on a field trip. And my mom, she called me. She was like, I signed you up for this field trip. You're leaving in the morning. I'm like, okay. And she was like, it's called Houston Tillerson. I'm like, okay. And I thought we were going to Houston, Texas. A lot of people do that. <laughs> yeah. And then I get on the bus. And I wake up and we're in Austin. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, but it's called Houston, Houston. And then they're like, yeah, a lot of people get that mixed up, yada, yada. And we're just touring the campus. We're walking around. And I was kind of just, I don't know. I was, because I wasn't really talking to the people that were on the trip. So I veered off and I saw one of the soccer girls. And I was like, 
hey, I play soccer and I was wondering if y'all had like any openings, like I want to try out. And she was like, hey, here's my coach's number. And I took it, I texted him, I sent him some highlights and then he was sending me like uh, ID camps. And I came to the ID camps and my dad, we were here and we were like, yeah, Austin is nice. Cause we started after the ID camp, we just drove around. We were like, yeah, this is nice. Like we like the place, the school. I didn't really get to see much of the school, but like the soccer field, when I first tried out, I was like, I like the vibes. I liked what, what was going on. So that's what brought me here, to be honest. <laughs> got her. <laughs> we got her. That's really all that matters. We got you now. We got, yeah, okay. We got the queen of Dallas. So then if you had a chance to come here to our school, Thank you for coming to Houston Tillotson. Thank you for coming to Austin. How did we get to the, the decision of what you were going to major in? How'd that come about? So my mom, she didn't really want me to go to college, but I was like, I was having senioritis and I was like, the Air Force, like that's, I felt like that was signing my life away. And I'm still, that's still an option, but it's like, I wasn't ready for that coming out of high school. I was kind of like nervous. So she was like, okay, well, if you go to college, don't pick a dumb major. Not saying anybody else's major is dumb, but she was like, pick a major like they need you. Because, you know, when COVID happened, she was like, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs, except for tech people, because everybody needed technology. So my mom was like, "Be do tech. And I was like, okay. And so I picked computer information systems. I was going to do computer science, but oh. then I was like, that's a lot of math. So yeah, that was the next best thing to me. Oh, oh, oh. Athletic and smart. Come on, Paris. Why are you why are you bragging, girl? Stop bragging. We just want to we, we trying to see if you down to earth. You all up in the clouds. My name is Paris. You start with that. You got the cool name. <laughs> all right, hold on now. Hold on. We're gonna bring you back to earth. We're gonna bring because it right now, everybody about to turn you off. It's like she a celebrity. You don't want to hear about no celebrity. All right, how about this? What is the most embarrassing thing about you? When you laugh, do you snort? Um, do you do you miss your mouth a lot when you're eating? Uh, are you clumsy? You naturally like clumsy. Give us something. Give us something. Uh, I'm gonna say this is probably not even really embarrassing for real, but like at practice, I'm always lost. I never know what's going on. I never <laughs> That's know. good. That's good. That's like me. I mean, that's why I had to do individual sports. I I, I ran track. <laughs> yeah, I always I need wrestled. a demo. I, I yeah. raise my hand every time. I need a demo. I need a demo. No doubt. Yo, I don't know how, like, at your dad, like, how them, how them football players remember all these plays? You're like, hey, we're going to do 6'4", 32, swing it. left. Huh? What a, hey, what are we doing? Just somewhere I got to be. <laughs> I don't even get that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that tight. But I'm also not a computer information systems. How many robots you done built already, girl? Oh, none. <laughs> how many? How, how many Alexas have you made already? Nada. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, you just a freshman. You just a freshman. That's gonna come. Yo, did you do any any cool stuff like uh like Afrotech was in town? Did you get to make it to that? Um, I actually. I went to something like that. It was a mixer because I didn't make it to the actual Afro Tech, but I went to the mixer where there were still some of those companies there. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you got to see a little bit of that. I mean, you—that's a great major in this town. We got Dell. We got Tesla. I mean, you, you know, you may never leave. Somebody gonna offer you a job right, right when you about to graduate, and you ain't going nowhere. I guarantee it. I know that's gonna happen. Yeah, I do plan you. on staying here. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. You know, it's not not too far from home. When you want to show up, sounds like that might really just be for the for the family. Yeah. But so you have your dad was kind of what we call a military brat, so he was kind of all over. But like, what about your mom? Is your mom is she from that area too? Yeah, she's straight from Oak Cliff. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's not she's not ghetto, but she's oh, well, you know, hey. I know everybody tries to associate that with ghetto, but yeah. 
No, I was going to hold it against her. And I was like, well, why ain't she? <laughs> what was she doing in Oak Cliff? She ain't talked to nobody. She was dodging all the cookouts. <laughs> she won't at the spot. She didn't come to the roller skating ring. What's your mom? What she got yeah. against us? <laughs> Actually, she went to um, she went to Carter High School. You know the same high school that uh, Shakiri, Shikari Richards? Yeah. 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 You know, they just named the, the track after her. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that was a big event. I don't know if your mom went to that, but that was just recently, though. <clears throat> in high school, before before I get too far away from this, you said that you got senioritis. It doesn't seem like you would end up in college, but you ended up going. Um, nothing against the military. I served in the military. Matter of fact, I played some sports in the military. When we get done with this, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Um, but I'm just kind of curious, how do you get – I, I just – I feel like you would be the type of person that would not do it, but yet here you are. What Was there a, a talk? Was it really just the sport that drew you is what it sounded like earlier when you said that? No, it was like – like college for me, it's just to prove my mom kind of wrong because my brothers and my cousins, they didn't go to college yeah. and like they kind of just stayed in Dallas and she still just thinks, oh, if you go to the military, like that you have a foundation, more of a foundation. And it's like, I want to prove her like, I got this. Oh, that's kind of yeah. how it is. Like, I just, I got it. I can do it. I'm, I noticed you got on the Boston shirt. Have you been to Boston? Oh, no. <laughs> I used to live there. It is an amazing city. Paris, you got to go visit it. I think you're going to like it. Seriously. I've been up north, but I don't like up north. I don't like anything. <laughs> up north. I, hey, you ain't got to move there, Paris. I just want you to just be able to say you did it. You know, that's where the American Revolution started. Yeah. When it's, we... just, it's too crowded up there for me. Like, I went to New York. I went to Jersey. I don't like it. Yup. No, look, as a guy who spent a lot of time in New York City, it's a nice place to visit, but I don't want to live there. And it's the exact reason you just said. Talking about athletes on top of athletes that y'all got in Dallas, there's just people on top of people that they got in New York. Yo, I, nah, I can't do it. Uh, that's tough. All right, so for you, here on campus now, computer information systems, what was like one of the biggest things when you were like, this is college. Like, when did it hit you that I'm actually in college? I'm actually doing this. Mm, it was like, uh, so the first, like, actually the first day they dropped me off, I cried because I was like, dang, like, I, I'm not going back to my mom's house. Like, they're about to leave. They're going back to her house, and I'm staying here. And yep. I was like, yeah, I couldn't have done the military. That's the first thing that came to my head. I was like, I couldn't have done it because I would have just been going, like, I can't go back. There's no going back. <laughs> so I was like, uh, it was like a, a two nights, two nights after I was there. I remember I went out with like some of the soccer people and we were just in the parking lot and it was like 12 o'clock at night. And I was like, I was looking in the sky. I was like, dang, I'm really in college. I did that a <laughs> lot. I was like, I would just zone out. I'm like, I'm really in college. Like, I'm with, I was telling myself, I'm like, I'm with strangers right now. Like, this is life now. Like, I have to adjust myself. I have to be more open. Like, this is life. Yeah. What do you think is the best part about your classes now? Are you, uh, are you still fighting a little senioritis? Or do you, do you think you're in your wheelhouse now? We're in second semester. You're settled. And what do, what do you what do you like most? I like that it's a it's this is really a dislike and a like because hmm. I like that it's a small university where we could be like more open and like we could talk to more be more personal with our professors. But yep. then there's like a downside because it's like attendance. If you're not there, if you're slipping and you're having a bad day, like it's noticed. But like like you can't just hide. You can't hide there. There's no hiding. Like. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. 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 When you are a big fish in a small pond, I went to a school 
where it was a, a smaller school. Uh, that it's got its benefits and it's got its drawbacks. Uh, I will say I liked it, and if I had to do all over again, I'd probably do that again. Uh, you can just like I said, sometimes you can get lost at the big schools. Like if you in a if you in a class with three hundred people, and like like you and I were saying, if if we didn't catch something and we got to ask the instructor, hey, uh, can you go over that again? Okay, come to my office hours. You may have to wait a week because they got there's thirty people in line ahead of you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think this is right where we're supposed to be, Paris. <laughs> this, this is where we need to be. Okay, so when it's all said and done, I want to know what will people call you here on campus? Now, before you answer that, what were you known as? Were you voted anything in high school? Most likely to take her name and become a, an actress <laughs> with the name of Paris Blade, like what would you? What were you voted there? Uh, I was more like the, not class clown, but more like she's she's funny. She has a sense of humor. Yeah. Here, when I first came here, I had red locks, so everybody was like, "Oh, I know you, cause you have red hair. You have red hair." It was yep. like a big. It was a. It was kind of like this, but a lot more in red, and they were like, "Oh yeah, Paris with the red hair." The girl with the red hair. That's what I was known as when I first got here. Right. And then once once you didn't have red, they kind of lost you. They lost you, didn't they? Like, hey, you uh you going back to that? Because that's how I remember you now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them did ask me that. Yeah. Then they don't understand. Yo, it's all right. We could change like the seasons. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's all about the moods here and there. All right. So if if there's anything that you say from this point on, this is where we judge you. So here's what I got to say. This is the one. This is I, I lied to her, listeners. I told her this was going to be nice and easy. Now I'm going to hit her with the hard stuff. Paris, okay. if you had an opportunity to get $500 million or you could help 20 families here in Austin, what you gonna take? Um, I'm gonna take the five hundred million dollars. I'm gonna use it towards my tuition, and then with the rest <laughs> of the money, I'll give it to the families. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, I thought I was gonna mess you up there, and you fell for it. But it, no, but I mean, that's it's okay. It's okay to want for yourself. What you do with the money, nobody knows what you're gonna do with that money. You can help more than twenty families. Yeah. But sometimes we want to fake. I was just trying to see if you was going to go, go fake and be like, oh, I want to help the family. <laughs> Come on, man. You know you want that money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you why people get... do that. It's because it's like in college, I've also learned like it's you for yourself. Like you have to do for yourself. Whenever you're on a plane, Paris, what's the first thing they tell you? In the event of an emergency, there's going to be oxygen masks that's going to fall from the ceiling. Put it on yourself first before you try to help others. Don't nobody complain about that. We know that to be pretty smart. Take care of yourself first so you can help someone else. Yeah. I don't get it. But I like you didn't even hesitate. The The best part about that is we know what kind of a person you are. So you're not, you, you, don't, you don't mess around. You don't tiptoe around it. You don't walk on eggshells. You seem pretty authentic. Let me tell you, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do unapologetically would that be a good yeah review yeah a lot of mm. people tell me that they tell me even like i could be lost and they'll be like you just look like you know where you're going i'm like i don't know how but i'm lost <laughs> right now <laughs> um what is your dream car that's really crazy because like my boyfriend he asked me that yesterday but uh -huh. <laughs> My dream car is, I like Jeeps, and I have a Jeep now, but I want yeah. a Jeep Wrangler. I want it to be all black, and I want it to have red interior. Oh, man, I like that. You got that strawberry interior. Ugh. Okay, I like it. You know, I'm surprised, especially because I was telling you I was in the military. Man, we all buy Jeeps. I'm surprised I never bought one. I was an Army dude, though, so we, we either buy Ford Mustangs. <laughs> 
we bought Camaros. What else? What else is stereotypical that we did? Well, a bunch of us had Broncos. The the old Ford Bronco, not this new one. Well, I, I like those though. I like Broncos. You gonna take it the way it is? Or are you gonna modify it? Which which ones? Oh, how I'm do you like? Modify it? It. Get some get some mud tires. Yes, ma'am. Put a little lift kit on it. Yeah, okay. Then you you doing what I'm doing now? Would you be riding around since you're a Jeep lady? You taking the doors off because they made sure that you could do that on it. No, I don't know. It's like that's that's cool. That's cute. But that's somewhere like the safari. That's a safari vibe for me. And it's like riding around in Texas with that or. Florida, yeah, Florida, but that's a rare day, not every yes. day. I'm in agreement. <laughs> I I also thought about the other driver. I got yeah. I might want a little more protection just in case I'd have been in some fender benders. And a lot of times it's a distracted driver, someone that wasn't paying attention, and I needed all that steel around me to get up out here. Yeah. Have you ever rode a motorcycle? Or would you? Um, no, I never wrote. I never rode a motor my motorcycle. I don't think, and I don't think I would, cause I don't know. It's just it's too scary for me. I don't know how people do it. It's just too much for me. I'm a motorcycle rider. I'm a biker boy. Your dad know about that. I'm a biker boy, meaning I've been doing it since at least that movie came out. Mm -hmm. But I done been in some accidents. And it wasn't all because of me, like I was telling you. And nowadays, so I don't mind dating myself here. I rode before cell phones, smartphones came out. And I'm going to tell you, whenever I'm on my motorcycle and I see a car swerving, a Jeep, a black Jeep with red interior, the first thing I say is, oh, well, first thing I say is that girl got red hair. And the second thing I say is she on her phone. <laughs> I can always... I come up and I can see it. Before I even get up there, I'm like, I bet they on their phone. I pull up next to them, th their head is down on the phone. And that, I'm telling you, I love doing it, but that takes the fun out of it. That, it, I, I don't even ride as much as I used to. I used to ride that thing every, I used to live, remember we were talking about Boston up north? I rode year round. Like, it's, it would snow and they cleared the roads. And so there's snow off to the, to the side. But the ground was dry, so I rode my motorcycle. It's cold, though. Oh, it's cold. I wouldn't ride a motorcycle here in Austin. I wouldn't even ride a nice car here because I'm not going to lie. The people do not know how to drive here. It's so crazy. Yes, ma'am. Right. No, you're right. Well, I, I don't live in downtown Austin. I'm out, I'm up north, so we, yeah, we got a little north, more space yeah. up here. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm hill country. Okay. So I want to know. What is your favorite genre of movies? I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna look. Yep, I'm gonna stand by this. I'm gonna stand by this. You're a horror movie person. No, I, I don't like horror movies. <laughs> oh, way off on that one. Then now I gotta know. I like um I love Marvel movies and I love like I like rom coms, like teen rom coms. I was going to say that at first. Dang it, man. <laughs> I should have said it. See, that's when you second guess yourself, you always, you're always you always wrong, man. That, I literally was going to say, I was like, you might, I was going to say, you like those mushy stuff. So Marvel, okay. Um, did you like, did you like the Avenger series or you like an individual people? I like individual people. I don't like the, well, well what do you mean by series? Like the stuff on Netflix? Yeah, when when they were a group, I know I know um, Black Widow had her standalone. Iron Man had his standalone. Captain America, Thor, they all had their standalone movies. Or do you like it when they're together as a group? Is what brought what you really like in Marvel? No, I like both. I like how like Marvel played it out like that. Like they would have movies where they would come together and then they'll tell you their story because you will be like. Well, who is Black Widow? And then they come in, they tell you who she is. I like that. Like that's what I love most about Marvel. But now I feel like the new Marvel movies aren't gonna be as good because like the characters are dying off. Yeah, I, I I'm 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 kinda along the same lines as you. Is uh I can't say I'm as hyped. There's like two things I ain't even seen yet. Blue Beetle is out. Your boy ain't seen that yet. 
Uh, Madam Web is out. Your boy ain't seen that at. But before, I probably couldn't have gone a week. And I, I, I felt like I was missing out on something with them all. Did you like Black Panther and what they did with Black Panther? Yes. I was very sad that he died, though. But yeah. yeah. I did. I liked Black Panther. It was just sad that he died. Everybody was fantasizing over Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> so, real talk, I uh, I was hoping they could have brought him back to life. I'm not against the sister. Was her name Sherry? I don't even remember their name. Sherry, really. I don't remember her name. But I was hoping maybe some of, what was the little uh, the blue flower juice? <laughs> that yeah. little smurf juice? Hopefully it could have done something and brought Michael B. Jordan back. I was like, oh, we good now. And then we he'll good. be a good guy. Yeah, I thought that too. Yeah. I mean, he had good intentions about taking care of... Now, nah, what can we say? Yo, he was a bad boy. <laughs> but maybe we could have got some good out of him every now and then. He come out of Wakanda, he do some good, then he go back to Wakanda. Because he's like, yo, I'm a bad boy, but I help y'all save the world. But then I'm going back because y'all don't want me out here. Like, maybe yeah. he could have done that. The hey auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so then I wanna I wanna come back. You said rom coms. You played a little basketball. Loving you basketball, have- love Jones. What's your favorite rom com? Sleepless in Seattle. What's mm-hmm. your favorite rom com? I like I like loving basketball, but that's not number one. It used to be number one, but I like kind of like uh, like some series on uh, on Netflix. Like, what is that called? Uh, it's Exo Kitty, like stuff like that. I like stuff oh. like that. Piss and Booze. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, when y'all gonna get a soccer rom com? I mean, we had the loving basketball. I know. I mean, right? Yeah, y'all need y'all. I mean, it's like the biggest sport in the world. And here in America, I know it's not the number one sport, but I mean, we could do something. And we could. They probably have that, probably over in Spain or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right. You have one opportunity to have dinner, and you can bring five people, dead or alive. Who you bringing? Um. My boyfriend, that's it. <laughs> no. Yo, I am. What did I say when we started episode 144? I can't say I've asked everybody, but see, this is I knew that, Paris. That's I, I'm glad I said that earlier. You are like you your own person. You said, yo, I, I, I say it, I stick with it, I own it. I love that, Paris. Forget that. I don't need four of the spots. I'm gonna have some one on one time with my boo. I love it. I wish I would have said that. Hey, I'm at home doing this. When I get out of here, I'm going to say that to my wife. So thank you for that. Appreciate you putting me up on game. Like, girl, <laughs> if I had a chance for five people in this world, dead or alive, I'm leaving four out and I'm just dining with you. Oh, I'm going to nail that. Matter of fact, let's shut this down right now and let me go use that right now because I think I think I can nail it. Now, that's cool. Paris, I like you. I, I really like that. That was an amazing answer. Um Make sure, yo, I think he got mentioned twice. Make sure your boyfriend check out this episode because, <laughs> man, your boyfriend getting some shout outs. But that's, yo, that's that's a that's a great answer. I really like that. I bet a lot of listeners, too, are like, man, I wish I would have thought. Y'all don't, hey, listen, y'all got it now. Paris just put us all up on game. So go. She didn't trademark that or copyright. <laughs> Thank you, Paris. Thank you for helping us all. All right. I don't even. I don't even know where to go with that because no one has ever nailed that. I don't had authors. I don't had millionaires up here. I, man, you're awesome, Paris Blade. That that was that was such a great answer. All right, we're gonna come back to one other little question that I I normally like to ask people. You are the person that's gonna have the opportunity to be the very first human on Mars. To walk on the planet, are you gonna take it? Mm. No. This was—I've never asked anyone this. I've been holding this one 
but I thought I'd give it to you. But um, it's it's tough. Yeah, I would say no because I mean there is somebody out there who actually want to do that for real, and that's never that's never ever <laughs> ever touched my mind. Don't waste it on me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my answer was. Normally, I, I like to let people, but I, I, I like you, Paris. I like to I like to let people say stuff, and then I go on to the next one. But I want to share with you. I'm like you. I I would not want to be the first person because a lot of stuff could go wrong, and I'm gambling with my life for what? I was yeah. living a good life, doing whatever I was trying to do, and I shouldn't have stepped out of my lane. So, kind of to your point, I'm gonna leave that to the people who want to do that. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have to chase that kind of fame. Yeah. <laughs> now, I believe in six degrees of separation. If you're not familiar, it's a principle stating that everyone knows someone that knows someone, and we're all a little more interconnected than we know. So in that, I want to know, what who's the most interesting person that you know, and what will you do to help me get them on this podcast? Doesn't have to be the most famous. Doesn't have to be the richest. Interesting. Like they interest you. Um, like that I know personally. Yes. Um, I'm gonna bring you back to my dad. Yeah, my dad, he's definitely one of the most interesting people I know. Wow. Okay. Uh well, uh he'll give you raw, raw, uncut, authentic answers. <laughs> okay, so then. What you gonna do to help me? You'll put in a word? Yes, I will. I'll actually send it to him. Okay, then we I guess we go we gonna get a shot at the dad. You know, I'm trying to think. I've gotten a lot of things. I think you're the first person that's offered up their dad. I've gotten one or two moms. So kudos to him. Kudos to you, dad, if you're listening to this. I had um I had an episode, the world's uh what it was called uh, our favorite uncle, and he wanted his his uncle, who's like eighty eight years old, years eighty eight years old, lived down in the south, went through all, lived through segregation, and I can't wait for that opportunity with him. Uh, I, I I've done a, a gentleman who was on The Voice and America's Got Talent and American Idol, and even he didn't say, but you okay. <laughs> I'm excited because that tells me he's an interesting dude. And I, I, I want to give him some props on raising such an amazing young lady there. You're a cool cat. You're cool beans, Paris Blade. <laughs> now, I want to come back to something that's a little divisive as our last sub, as our last question. I can't believe the time has flown like this, but that's good for me because I, I, I love when I'm having fun. Who's the best athlete in the family? Um, definitely like amongst us or like my dad included, like him like, included. I mean, it's like, he probably only played that one sport football. Boo. Look at you. You played it all. <laughs> I probably will say like it's between me and him, but I will say me because like, I don't know. I will say me. Yeah. You got rage. Girls, you did. I mean, you. You were you were shot. You were a thrower. You did basketball. You did volleyball. Here you're playing soccer. You know I, I I would say it's you, and it, that's also a compliment to him because you know what do we do? Our parents struggled so hard to give us opportunities, and he may not have had the opportunity to 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 realize all of this, but. Because he was able to give you the opportunity, yo, you got the title. Yeah. One thing about my dad, though, I'm not going to lie. He'll tell you this is so. It was never really a struggle. Oh, really? Yeah. And I wanted to be like that for my kids, too. Like, it's not a struggle. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't even have to be that way for real. I think it should. I don't know. But my dad, he never made it a struggle for us. And my grandparents, they didn't make it a struggle for him. If they needed yeah. it. He got it. Yo, I like that. I so let's stay. Let's stay that. Oh, you're breaking up again. Ah, let me write this down. And your foes. 
Man, I don't know what is going on. I still show that I got a, a strong signal. I'll give it a second. I'll give it a second. Let me know when it unfreezes. Maybe. Did it unfreeze? Oh, it just froze again. God. Wait. Okay, you're on froze now. I said I, I gave you the last question, but I just want to back up. What do you think? What do you think is the best thing that you have learned from what you just said about your grandparents for your dad, your dad to you? What's going to make you an amazing parent one day that you've learned from all of them? Um, just because it happened to them or it happened to like other people doesn't mean it has to happen to them, to your kids. Like anything that I've experienced that I didn't like doesn't mean I have to put that on my kids. Like I just, I want them to know, like be educated and know right from wrong. Like they don't have to, there's no struggle. Like <laughs> I want them to know. Yeah. I got you. Yo, I like that. Paris Blade. You are officially off the hot seat, and I enjoyed my time here. Is there any social media, anything you want to offer? If now some of the listeners want to follow or keep in touch, you got any any items you wanted to offer? Um, my Instagram is Perry D O R P A R I I D I O R. That's cool. That's cool. That's it. Let them follow. And uh, now let's see. I I I. I need to come out. I got to make it to a soccer game. <laughs> I'm not, I'm actually kind of connected to the soccer program. <laughs> I know somebody else. So now that I know two people on the soccer team, I'm going to have to make it to a game because this is, this, this would be pretty embarrassing if I don't come see y'all play. You promise me though, I'm going to get a little, uh, I'm going to get a little, little, little pushing and shoving. You're going to, you're going to play it to the contact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> we'll be like, hey, y'all see that? I knew she was gonna throw that elbow. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. I know he I'm here for the header. Too. What was that? I said he has an Android, so I don't know about camera quality. <laughs> that this is cool. This is cool. Thanks a lot, Paris. We had a blast. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.